Are there two sides to people? Something good? Something bad? Light? Dark? In the original Star Wars trilogy, the Force is used as a way to describe a general spirituality, something akin to our own universe. Billions of people rallying around something invisible, something internally experienced, believed to be part of life. The Force is not just sci-fi hokum, it resonates with people, allowing them at least a playful version of spirituality to think on. But is there anything more to the Force? And can we learn anything about life from the way the Force intertwines with the characters and the events of Star Wars? Let's start with what the Force is. The Force? Now, the Force is what gives the Jedi his powers. It's an energy field created by all living things. It surrounds us and penetrates us. It binds the galaxy together. Life creates it. Makes it grow. Its energy surrounds us and binds us. Luminous beings are we, not this crude matter. You must feel the force around you. Here, between you, me, the tree, the rock, everywhere. According to George Lucas, the force was a way of awakening a certain kind of spirituality in those who went to see the movie, a combination of all world religions a way of speaking about certain religious concepts like the existence of God and the nature of good and evil. The Force can be viewed as a stand-in for the concept of God. George used the word Force because of what cinematographer Roman Kreuter said in the short film 2187. Many people feel that, that in, in sort of the contemplation of nature and uh, in communication with other living things, they become aware of some kind of uh, force or, or something behind this apparent mask which we see in front of us and they call it God or they you know depending on on their particular disposition but the force has a way you must learn the ways of the force I want to learn the ways of the force and become a Jedi like my father that is the way of things Way of the force. In a counter to that way, there's the light side, which is the path for a Jedi, a path of selflessness, but also the dark side, which is a path of selfishness. The balance of the force takes place within a person when they are neither too selfish or too selfless. The core of the force. I mean, you got the dark side, the light side. One is selfless, one is selfish. And you want to keep them in balance. This echoes a Hebrew proverb written by King Solomon. So don't be too good or too wise. Why destroy yourself? On the other hand, don't be too wicked either. Don't be a fool. Why die before your time? But if one were to actually follow the way of the Force, they would find that they would avoid extremes of both the light side and the dark, as is echoed in the conclusion of the proverb. Pay attention to these instructions, for anyone who fears God will avoid both extremes. The balance of the Force also echoes the middle way in Buddhism, which advocates avoiding the extremes in life as well. The path of the light side is exemplified by Luke, and the path of the dark side by Darth Vader, Luke's father. The original Star Wars trilogy deals with the relationship between father and son. Lucas studied Joseph Campbell's work on what is referred to as the monomyth, a look at the common themes and motifs running through history's different mythologies that descend from man's own experiences, as a reference point to discuss the psychological dilemmas of people throughout history and the potential solutions of those dilemmas. I had studied Joe Campbell, I continued to study Joe Campbell, and I really tried to take these psychological motifs from mythology all over the world. As a result, I was able to take ideas that go through all societies, through all the ages, and bring them down and put them into a razzle-dazzle Saturday matinee serial action-adventure film. Star Wars is a museum piece for the psychology of our ancestors, focusing, primarily, on our relationship to the generations that came before us and the influence they have on our own lives. I used to always think of mythology as a form of psychological archaeology. You're not just digging up pieces to look at them and try to figure out what is what's going on with the society. With mythology, you can actually 
understand the psychological underpinnings of what people actually were thinking, what they were afraid of, what they felt about their parents. Lucas attended college and began his first forays into filmmaking during the counterculture revolution of the 60s, which was a rebellion against the corrupt authoritarian structures that presided over America at the time. This mirrors the Greek myth of the Olympians, the young generation of gods led by Zeus, battling the older generation of gods, the Titans led by the evil tyrant Cronus, for who would have dominion over the universe? History repeating itself, the strength of the monomyth being played out. In the Star Wars saga, the Empire represents the evil tyranny of an older generation led by the Emperor and his apprentice Vader and the Rebellion represents the idealistic, righteous fortitude of the younger generation, with Luke eventually joining and becoming one of its leading forces. While the galaxy is fighting to see who will come out on top, the evil empire, or the noble rebellion, Luke's own journey is unfolding, a journey to becoming a Jedi like his father was. In the beginning of Star Wars, Luke has no discernible beliefs and is essentially wasting his physical and spiritual existence on frivolity and dreams. But I was going into Toshi Station to pick up some power converters! Then Luke is introduced to the Force by Obi-Wan Kenobi and later taught by the Jedi Master Yoda. All of his training and experiences culminates into him becoming a powerful Jedi who is able to harness the light side of the Force. Vader's journey starts out much like Luke's, but instead of finding spiritual enlightenment, we find spiritual death, a descent into the dark side of the Force. He abandons the goodness of the light side of the Force for the selfishness and lust for power that makes up the dark side. In other words, he sells his soul and his humanity for what the dark side of the Force has to offer. His body metamorphosizes into something mechanical, and the darkness completely surrounds him, like his black suit, lost and cut off from experiencing the light in the universe, both physically and spiritually. Vader's fall parallels the story of Faust, who sells his soul to the demon Mephistopheles for the pleasures of the world. Faust, after attaining some pleasure, ends up getting taken to hell. Vader's hell is the utter loss of humanity and isolation by the suit and what his choices have brought him. The main conflict in the original Star Wars trilogy is can Luke overcome the struggles and temptations that his father went through to join the dark side and become a Jedi, or will he fall into the same traps and essentially become a mirror of his father, following in the footsteps and inheriting his curses? Part of it is to bring back some of those old psychological motifs from mythology, your relationship to your father, your relationship to the generation that came before you that mm -hmm. seems to have screwed everything up. And how do you feel about passing that on to your kids? And how do your kids feel about the fact that you've been handed this mess from the earlier generation? You know, can you be stronger than your father in terms of the temptations that he was over, you know, the things he was maybe able to come over, overcome or not overcome? A common theme of religion is wickedness leads to hell, or a state of suffering. Righteousness leads to heaven, or a state of bliss. Buddhists would articulate this sentiment as oneness with the universe leads to nirvana, which is a state where people are free from a sense of self that binds them to the world and the suffering therein. Samsara, on the other hand, is a state of mental suffering by which people are bound to this world and are stuck in a cycle of reincarnation until they can reach enlightenment, and thus escape the world and therefore the suffering. The light side of the force can be seen as a parallel to nirvana, and samsara can be regarded as a parallel to the dark side. The light side is about selflessness, which is derived from a lack of ego, or a passiveness and adherence to the Force. The Jedi at one with the Force lets the Force move through them, unimpeded, letting go of thoughts that could interfere with the truth stemming from the Force and what the Force can do through them. Remember, a Jedi can feel the Force flowing through him. You mean it controls your actions? Partially but it also obeys your commands. A Jedi is disciplined, level-headed, at peace, compassionate, merciful, loving, and faithful to what is true despite what they see. I don't... I don't believe it. That is why you fail. The dark side is about selfishness, which is derived from greed and wantonness. Once one starts down the path to the dark side, or the life of want and desire, they are always wanting more, causing them to do heinous acts in order to obtain pleasure and possessions. This pleasure leads to a fear of others taking away what they have possessed, which puts them in a state of mind where they are lashing out at others before they have the chance to be hurt themselves, using anger, hatred, and murder as methods to procure and maintain power over others. What happens when you go to the dark side is it get really selfish and you forget about everybody and you 
ultimately lead yourself because when you get selfish, you get stuff or you want stuff. Mm -hmm. And when you want stuff and you get stuff, then you get are afraid somebody's going to take it away from you, whether it's a person or a thing or mm -hmm. a, a particular pleasure, experience. A Jedi's strength flows from the Force, but beware of the dark side. Anger, fear, aggression, the dark side of the Force are they. Easily they flow, quick to join you in a fight. If once you start down the dark path, forever will it dominate your destiny, consume you at will, as it did Obi-Wan's apprentice. Vader. Luke's path to becoming a Jedi and learning the ways of the Force parallels the path to spiritual enlightenment that takes place in Buddhism, away from attachment and samsara, and into nirvana, aka oneness with the universe, or more specifically, the Eightfold Path, as laid down by Buddha. The Eightfold Path consists of right view, right thought, right speech, right conduct, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, and right concentration. In looking at Luke's journey through the lens of these paths, we can examine where he starts out in the first Star Wars and The Empire Strikes Back, and see how he changes into an enlightened Jedi by the end of Return of the Jedi. Luke starts out in both a literally and spiritually arid place, a farm boy on a desert planet living to hang out with his friends, work for his uncle, and dream about a brighter future. At this point, Luke is faithless and ignorant on matters of the Force until he happens upon Obi-Wan, who introduces him to the Force and entices him to learn its ways. Right view means that one is perceiving the true nature of reality without illusion or pretense. Obi-Wan teaches Luke to reach out with his feelings and let the Force flow through him, or in other words, to view life through what the Force informs him is real and not with his own senses. Your eyes can deceive you, don't trust them. Right thinking also implies right attitude, simply meaning that one must align themselves with the truth about reality in order to think and feel correctly. Luke and his attachment to his aunt and uncle feels hopeless about his future and fear about leaving them. He then loses this attachment when they die. In The Empire Strikes Back, Luke's attachment to his friends causes him to fear their death and abandon his training to save them and recklessly take on Vader despite warnings that he is not efficient enough in the ways of the Force. And so, due to his negative thoughts and feelings stemming from his attachment to his friends, he almost dies. Right speech means that one is practicing clear, truthful, and non-harmful speech. Luke starts out in a negative state of mind, which follows with a negative way of speaking. Are you kidding? The right there, gaining? If there's a bright center of the universe, you're on the planet that it's farthest from. What a piece of junk! Such a long way from here. That's your uncle talking. No, I don't even know what I'm doing here. We're wasting our time. Right conduct means one is living peacefully and in harmony with others. At the beginning of Luke's journey, he is at odds with his uncle and aunt, then Han, and an empire Yoda and Vader. The last one may seem like a reasonable exception, Vader is evil and murderous, but right conduct implies living in harmony with everyone, regardless if they are your enemy or not. This sentiment by Buddha is echoed by a similar sentiment from Jesus. Love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. But instead of embracing this precept, Luke faces Vader in combat. Right livelihood has to do with the non-exploitation of others. In the first Star Wars, Luke convinces Han that he should rescue Leia for a reward. She's rich. Exploiting his need for money so he can save her. Right effort is when one gains control over their thoughts by training mindsets based in samsara with mindsets based out of nirvana. In Luke's case, Yoda teaches him that he should give up what he has learned in life before learning the ways of the Force and let the Force flow through him so he can utilize its power. You must unlearn what you have learned. Luke considers the feat of pulling his ship out of the swamp on Dagobah to be impossible. But Yoda reminds him that the Force has no bounds and size does not matter. I can't. It's too big. Size matters not. Look at me. Judge me by my size, do you? Luke, in his perception of what is impossible, renders himself and the power of the Force useless. Right mindfulness has to do with developing an awareness of ourselves, our thoughts and feelings, other people, things, and reality itself. And right concentration is when one is utterly focused and immersed in the right ways of the paths, practicing and meditating on the statutes that stem from nirvana. 
where Luke was focusing on negative emotions and thoughts from the beginning of the series and resisting the ways of the Force, he has grown considerably at the start of Return of the Jedi. To start, Luke selflessly rescues Han at his own peril, letting the Force flow through him and utilizing it with skill and ease. He is only able to do this by having his view on reality be in line with the Force. After he visits Yoda, who tells him that he must confront Vader in order to become a Jedi, he joins up with a rebel team that includes Han and Leia to take down a shield generator for the new Death Star on Endor. When Luke senses that he might be endangering the mission by coming along, he is apprehensive. He does not wish to exploit others in order to get closer to Vader. On Endor, Luke turns himself over to Vader in order to convince his father to give in to the good that is still in him. From here on, Luke is tested to see if he can withstand the temptations of turning to the dark side and following in his father's footsteps. Up until this point, Luke has demonstrated that he is at harmony and at peace with his friends and the Force, but as he is tested, cracks in his demeanor start to appear. The Emperor and his father tempt him to the dark side through using the attachments that he still has to the world to spur on fear, anger, hatred, and promises of power and possession. First, he lashes out in hatred and anger at the Emperor for his plan to end the rebellion. Second, he begins to battle Vader out of anger until he stops himself. Then, after he refuses to fight for a moment, Vader uses Luke's attachment to Leia, Luke's sister, threatening that if he doesn't join the dark side, then maybe she will. Following this threat, Luke strikes out at Vader in a fit of rage and chops off his hand. This leads the audience to the climax of Luke's entire arc as a character. He sees his mechanical hand that was given to him after it was lopped off by his father and realizes that he is heading down the same path as him. He throws away his lightsaber and states that he will never join the dark side. Here we see the culmination and fruition of the right paths that Luke was tested on. He gives up the cause of his anger, which was rooted in his attachment to his sister, and even permits his own death by throwing away his method of defense. He is free to die and free from attachment to this world, and is, therefore, truly enlightened, or, in the case of the movies, at one with the light side of the forest. Two paths in Star Wars, dark or light, bad or good, empire or rebellion. The big bad empire spans across the galaxy in Star Wars, just like the corrupt governments and soulless corporations that spread their influence across our world, tyrannically ruling and imposing their special interests on everyone, regardless of the way it negatively affects people. We live in a world ruled over by the equivalent of a dark force that manifests when people desire power over their own lives and over the lives of others, which makes them turn into soulless machinations of who they were, like Vader. We can spend our lives on the farm under the dominion of the Empire, living a dull, monotonous life as nothing more than a drone to work and dream about what could be better. This one, a long time have I watched. All his life as he looked away to the future, to the horizon, never his mind on where he was, hmm? what he was doing. Hmm. Adventure. <laughs> Excitement. Hey, hey, Jedi craves not these things. You are reckless. Or we can start our own spiritual journey towards enlightenment, overcoming the negative influences of our family lineage, and becoming a person at peace and one with the universe, who is an ambassador for good, an upholder of faith for what is true, and a promoter of compassion, love, and mercy. All of my movies are about one thing, which is the fact that the only prison you're in is the prison of your mind. And if you decide to open the door and get out, you can. There's nothing stopping you. 